everyone, it's Judy. Welcome back to the On Track Podcast. Today, I have one of your favorites with me, who is Dr. Eric Bogatin, and he's going to talk about a new book he has published recently that's going to tell you everything you ever wanted to know about transmission lines. So lean in, enjoy, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to All Team's On Track Podcast, where we talk to leaders about PCB design, tackling subjects ranging from schematic capture all the way to the manufacturing floor. I'm your host, Judy Warner. Please listen in every week and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and all your favorite podcast apps. And be sure to check out the show notes at altium.com forward slash podcast, where you can find great resources and multiple ways to connect with us on social media. Well, hi, Eric. It's good to see you. It's hey, Judy, while. it's always a, always a pleasure chatting with you. Great to see you. I don't think I've seen you since Design Con, and who knows when I'll see you again. <laughs> we'll have to do it virtually until yes, then. Yes, we will. I love your background, by the way. Okay, so story behind that. Yeah. Uh, so I, I teach a, a class at University of Colorado in Boulder, Yeah. and uh, we're going to Zoom classes. And, and so I am. Uh, we have a, a Zoom class every Friday that we meet and I'm insisting my students come to my zoom class. And so every week I'm going to have a different background <laughs> for my students. And so I've been collecting uh, these uh, interesting uh, backgrounds that I think will uh, resonate with my students. So this is one of them. That's so cool. I like it. I, you know, I think science fiction, I'm discovering this like, I don't admit to most people that I was a complete science fiction nut when I was a kid. Are you really? Um, yes. Like all the greats, I read them all, but it was uh -huh. like, I don't admit that to many people, but what I find out is <laughs> I that- I won't tell oh, anybody, don't worry. Don't tell. <laughs> um, but I find out a lot of engineers that I talk to are equally into the old sci-fi books. So I'm like, huh, I guess. Well, you know what? The, my two favorite- old 1950s science fiction movies are earth versus flying saucers the, the one over here because um they have for the time they had great special effects and of course the day the earth stood still yeah Very, well there the it is you one. have you yeah so they're my favorite ones okay can i take a uh 30 seconds to plug my two science fiction novels yes. now that i know you like science fiction i totally forgot you wrote science fiction novels yes yeah so i'm glad i thought of, re of reminding you you have totally. to check them out and your and your viewers have i've to never check out. read them we're oh, going to put them in gosh. the show notes yes yeah. so they're okay. on amazon the first one is called shadow engineer and um it's about um, in fact, there are a couple lines in there that I read to my class. I've taught a sophomore engineering class years ago, and, and I read the first paragraph to my students because it's about what an, an engineer is. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. That's the hero is this engineer uh, who saves the world. Um, and so that's the first book, Shadow Engineer. There's a, tr there's a series of six books in this series. The first one is Shadow Engineer. The second one is a continuation, and it's called S is for Space. And it's about Navy SEALs that have to take on some aliens. Oh, maybe I gave away too much. And then um, I've got four others. The third one I'm working on, and I hope to have that. Um, I was hope for December, but it'll probably be, you know, probably in June next year. And there'll be three more after that. So check it out, Amazon.com. I will. You know, somewhere that little breadcrumb is back there that I knew about you, but I had put that away in some dark closet. I forgot that about you. That's yeah. fascinating. Now I want to go so, read your books. Yeah, Amazon.com. Okay. Uh, just do Bogotin and you'll see all the books that I've got up there. And you'll see Shadow Engineer and S's for Space. How fun and, is that? And if you like them, write a review on Amazon. Okay, done. Thank you. Okay. Next okay. time we talk, we'll see if I've read your book. Okay. okay. They're really, they're a lot of fun. Well. Nonstop action. Okay. <laughs> I can only imagine. So perfect segue to talk about a new book that you have out. I saw on LinkedIn that your new book is out. And so tell us a little bit. Your title is a tongue twister. So I'm going to let you say it. I'm not even going to try. And then so, let's give me the title first yeah, and okay. then tell us, uh, you know, give us an overview of the book. Okay. So the book is, is published by a new publisher for me, Artec. They're a sister 
publication house of um, Signal Integrity Journal. We're all under the Horizon Publishing House. Uh, and this book is called Bogotin's Practical Guide to Transmission Line Design and Characterization for Signal Integrity <laughs> Applications. And so we, we, we literally, um, we're starting to th brainstorm and throwing ideas of what words, what keywords do we want in the title? And we had a bunch of keywords and, and then we put them on a little magnets or stickies on the, on the refrigerator and we moved them around and that's the title we ended up with. So it's, it's like half the book is in the title, <laughs> um, but it really tells everything that's in there. It's, um, it's the, so funny. Uh, our tech, uh, we've negotiated a series of books that I'm working on that are about, you know, they're practical guides, they're about signal integrity, and they're for me. And so they wanted, you know, all that in the title. And so we've got this one on transmission lines. The next one that'll come out in March is on uh, uh, practical print circuit board design and manufacture. Um, got some others about scopes and other applications after that. Um, and so this one is really about uh, kind of, uh, uh, everything you ever wanted to know about transmission lines, starting from the basics. And um, uh, uh, I, I've you know, I've been in history for a long time. I've talked to a lot of people and I think the most confusing topic out there that I encounter with, with especially new engineers and some experienced engineers is transmission lines. And it's also the most important, most fundamental, no, most basic element in all systems because all interconnects are really transmission lines. And, um, and so I, I decided that, okay, I need to set a really, really solid foundation for any engineer that's getting in this field. You know, I've got my other book on signal and power integrity simplified, and that helps a lot. Uh, but I, I encounter so many engineers and a lot of layout engineers that deal with designing circuit boards that that really don't understand what a transmission line is. And, and you get these two extremes. You got the, the, the water in a pipe analogy or metaphor, yeah. and you've got the differential equation, the telegrapher equation that you solve and you get you know, waves out of it and you get heavy side equation. And, and there's not much in between. And, and I wanted a book that would start out with basic engineering principles that really develop your engineering intuition about how signals interact with transmission lines, yet isn't some water analogy that, that is the real physics behind it. So that what you learn, you, you can leverage, you, you can scale it as far ahead as you want. Um, and so that's what this is. It's a little bit on what are the essential principles. It's a little bit about, okay, now I understand what impedance is. And, and I try to also illustrate why this field has been so confusing because of the words that we use and how, in, well, not informal, but, but how we, we are not careful with the right qualifiers. In other words, like we use impedance, there's characteristic impedance, there's input impedance, there's, there's time domain impedance. There are all these different kinds of impedance and we're sloppy about how we define them, how we use them. And so I wanted to put them all in perspective and give people a solid foundation and then we talk about in the book, um, how do you design a transmission line using a 2D field solver? And how do you explore the trade-off of line width and thickness and what's important in thickness and, and what is dielectric constant? And how do you, what are simple ways of measuring that? And then there's the characterizing, which is the measuring part. And I use a, so Teledon Lacroix has come out with a new TDR instrument, which I have to say it's the easiest one to use out there works great, does single and differential. And so I have a lot of examples of measurements uh, with the TDR so that um, there's nothing like, you know, seeing it, seeing the principles in action and seeing traces, squiggles on a screen and, and understanding how to interpret those based on those principles. So it's the whole shebang from principles, design to uh, characterization. I always love how whatever you either talk about or write about bridges this gap between principles that you can apply and practicality because it seems like those things tend to live sort of exclusively, right? Like here's the academia theory over here and then over here is, you know, where the rubber meets the road and the actual you know, and, and what happens in between, I think, is where all the confusion happens. So, yeah. Well, everyone knows it feels and waves do this and so on and so forth. But, you know, the way that you sort of 
illustrate that, I think really brings it to life. So that's just something unique about yeah. your teaching style, I think, that really appeals to people. So you mentioned that the, the reason you wrote this book is because you think it's the single most problematic area. So when did you decide to write this book? Were there other compelling reasons? You know, it takes a lot of effort, I imagine, not that I've ever done it, to write a book, and you've written several. So what else about this topic was compelling enough for you to put in the hard work of writing a book with the other 50 things that you do <laughs> in your life, yeah. Eric? So I, you know, the first one on signal integrity that I wrote for Prentice Hall on signal and power integrity simplified, you know, that was as a result of teaching a lot of classes and, and encountering a lot of engineers that really didn't understand the fundamentals or they were taught the fundamentals based on, you know, solving Maxwell's equations and, and they don't really understand what it means. And so that first book kind of was my, here's the basic stuff you need to know to soup to nuts to get into signal integrity. And over the last, I don't know, maybe uh, three years or so, I've been going around uh, wearing my Teledyne LaCroix hat, doing a lot of workshops, uh, live events, uh, 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 webinars and seminars with engineers. And, and, and I have noticed this trend that I kept getting the same misconceptions back. When I talk about when you use a, a scope, um, uh, one of the artifacts that is introduced is the reflections between the source and the scope because of the 50 ohm cable and the impedance mismatch. And it's a very fundamental thing and it's all about transmission lines and about um, the uh, uh, reflections on the ends. And, and I found when I was doing that, that there were so many engineers that didn't really understand like you, you just mentioned, the practical nature of transmission lines. Yeah, they studied the differential equations, they studied the transmission line, the input impedance of a transmission line and when they were a graduate student or an undergraduate, but they didn't know, what does that mean? I've got a cable in front of me, what is this thing? And, and if I stick an ohmmeter in the front of it between the signal and the return, half the engineers that I talked to said, oh, if I stick an ohmmeter between the, the signal and, 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 and the return path for it, that that I'm gonna measure 50 ohms. And, and of course you don't, it's an open. And so there was this disconnect between, just like you said, what I did in the textbook and what I encounter in the real world, how do I apply those principles? And that's when I realized that, you know, so, and I, the other thing is in the last couple of years, I've been spending a lot of time with print circuit board design and teaching my class at CU on circuit board design and using Altium and, and the, students, um, uh, you know, that's when I realized that all the RF classes and all the training they were getting, they really didn't understand what is this trace on the board? How is it related to impedance? Um, and that's when I realized I need to do a book that really answers all these questions. It answers the questions for all the engineers that I've encountered out there that are confused about this topic. Um, and, um, and so it was a combination of, of hearing the problems from the industry and um, and, and having access to this really cool TDR instrument that we had at Telen LaCroix, and I could do some really cool demos with it. And, and one of the things we do in this book that's different from many is, this is, it's a digital book in the sense that there are uh, embedded videos in the book. And so every chapter I have, you know, one or two, like five to 10 minute videos that I've done to uh, either show a demo or illustrate the principles or, um, uh, do a calculation so that you kind of see, okay, this is what's behind it all. Um, or I, ha I bring you into my lab and we uh, do measurements with my TDR and you see the results and I interact with you and show you, okay, the feature here on the TDR is related to this structure here in the board. And so it's, it's kind of like being there. Um, and so it's, it's a foundation building and it's also bridging that gap between the, the principles, the practice, how do you apply them? And it's the real world. Here is a real thing you hold in your hand and we do a measurement with, and here's how we interpret the measurement. It sounds like pure gold actually to, you know, and, bridge and that you're gap. you're so perceptive, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, as everything is that I write. <laughs> well, um, I just wanted to make this quick podcast to tease your book and we will put 
that link. So where can people go? You mentioned our tech house. Um, yeah. Where can people go to get your book, Eric? So right now, um, let's see, it's on Amazon. Um, now we came out originally with just a digital version, a soft copy you download because there's so many embedded links in it. Uh, but there's been such a strong demand for, just give me a hard copy. You know, it's, there's this, I think around 40 years old, people older than 40 years old, they want the hard copy. People younger than 40 years old, they want the soft copy. And so we thought, oh, it's too much embedded video. It's gotta be a soft copy. But now so many people want hard copy. So I think both are gonna become available on Amazon. So you go to amazon.com, you just type in Bogotin, and you'll see all the books that I've got there. You can buy a copy of Shadow Engineer while you're there. And there will be, um, uh, I have it on my author page, linked the uh, uh, Transmission Line book. And I think when the hardback version comes out, it'll go up on Amazon as well. Um, or you can go to our tech, their website, and um, uh, download it from, uh, from their site as well. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go find your author page on Amazon. I'll share that as well as the link to our tech. And um, before I let you go, uh, I also got some great news from you today that you've agreed to participate in Altium Live. So I want to have you back to talk about that. And also, you've agreed to be on a, a very uh, amazing, talented panel with you, Isvan Novak, Heidi Barnes from Keysight, and Steve Sandler of Pico Test. And maybe one more. We're working on it. But thank you so much. I'm sure that the listeners will be excited to hear that you'll be able to join. And for our listeners, by the way, All Team Live is going virtual and it's free. No traveling. You can consume it online, live, Q&A. You can have Q&A with Eric. So thanks for agreeing to do that. And we look forward to hearing more about your topic. Do you want to like give us any sneak peeks into what you're thinking sure. about talking yeah, about? Yeah, so I'll, I'll tease you a little bit. So, you know, in the last um, a couple of years, I've been spending a lot of my time going around uh, for Tell and LaCroix and doing these um, really cool demos of different kinds of signal integrity problems that you can uh, understand and solve uh, through measurement. And one of my uh, old bosses at, at uh, LaCroix, uh, Dave Graff, used to be our CTO, he, he said that... Um, uh, that um, uh, a measurement is what you use to get it right the second time. You know, you design it right, so you get it right the first time, that's by design, but okay, you know, if it didn't quite come out the way you want, you wanna get it right the second time as quick as you can, and that's where measurement comes in. And so um, I've got these uh, boards that um, I've built and my students have built that demonstrate uh, really valuable signal integrity principles. We have some examples of it's designed well in this region and then we do it not well in the other region and we can demonstrate the impact on the layout and how you design the board using measurements. And so um, I, I've got a collection of these and what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is um, maybe kind of my best hits of uh, some of the measurement examples. Like one of the, the ones that um, I, I just presented at the IEEE EMC symposium is an example of um, you know of this question of should you use a split ground plane and it's a if you if you whisper split ground plane in the ear of an EMC engineer you'll you'll get them to start shaking and going into conniptions because you know never use that but yet there are some people that say well there's one case that you want to use a split ground plane um, and so I have an example of that where we measure the impact of splitting a ground plane on a very special kind of crosstalk. And you find, wow, there is a dramatic reduction in the amount of crosstalk you get if you use a split plane. And so we show that example of, you know, here's the system, here's how you measure it. Yep, there is a big difference in the amount of crosstalk. But then I go ahead and I show you, if that's the problem that you've got, and why you're thinking about using a split plane, then you're doing your measurement wrong, that there's a, or you're doing your circuit design wrong. There's a better way of designing your, your circuit so that you'll never have that problem even if you don't have a split plane. So the demo is very shocking because it shows, wow, that's a big improvement for this very special case. So I got that one and I've got probably two or three other uh, really cool demos I'm gonna do of um, uh, illustrating signal integrity principles um, uh, by way of some experiments. Sounds 
fantastic, like your presentations always are, which is why people keep asking us to have you back year after year. So we cannot wait to see what you come up with. So we'll get that. They're building the Altium Live because we're building a new website now because it's virtual and it's going to be really different. So we're building that. So we'll have you back, Eric, soon. Great. Uh, I'll look forward to it. Yeah, we look forward to having you back. So um, to our listeners, thanks so much for joining us for this real brief podcast, which basically was like a book club. So <laughs> welcome to Eric Bogatin's <laughs> book fan club, and I'll be sure to share all the links to his fiction and nonfiction works below. Please hop in and take a look at his, his work. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So we'll be with you next time with Eric again. Until then, remember to stay healthy, stay safe, and always remember to stay on track. <laughs>